around because you've got two other fights in there that Bosch is going to break down in a few moments. Condit Hendricks, Ellen Berger, and Mark Ward that all factor in to that whole strong division, Boss. I know, I know. Every single fight could have kind of be in the main event yeah. here. Do you know? But of course, we all want to see Nick Diaz, George St. Pierre, because that's going to be in Barn Burner. Ooh. That's it, because St. Pierre, obviously, on his way to the UFC Hall of Fame. Nick Diaz has done a lot of talking, at least when he shows up. He didn't show up at a UFC event on Wednesday, but he did make the press conference yesterday. And of course, he had some things to say. <laughs> George likes to say I remind him of the bullies that picked on him growing up or they had to deal with. You know, I want to say, like, how many, how many times you uh, had a gun to your head, George? How many kids put gum in your hair growing up? They're selling you all wolf tickets, people. You're eating them right up. George here is selling you wolf tickets. Dana here is selling you wolf tickets. The UFC is selling you with some wolf tickets. Why are you mad, bro? Because you're full of shit and everybody knows it? I never walked away from any, any fights uh, that, <laughs> you know, that were, you know, less than two people who put gum in his hair uh, i'd be very fortunate that only one time but it was not very close <laughs> that's that's a gun to his head and gum in gum in his hair or gun yeah, in his hair a gun a gun, gun to, to his head. head and i thought yeah. he said gum in his hair has a lot to do with well with anyway he lots. says a lot yeah you know what this is kind of make or break time though for him isn't it it really is I he mean, needs to put up now he's lost the condit if he loses now he drops down the division. Who knows if he ever gets another title shot? Uh, yep. Meanwhile, the champ was agitated, aggravated at the press conference. Not surprised, though, to hear from Diaz, right? Oh, yeah, he was just sitting all down. He's sitting there, mm, very zen-like as the man that possesses the belt. And he sat down with our own zen-like correspondent, Ron Kruk, who's in Montreal, and he spoke with GSP about that situation. Thanks, guys. George St. Pierre, Nick Diaz, no-shows the open workouts here today. How frustrating is this for you personally? I don't, I don't mind. I mean, uh, he doesn't do his job, so me, I have to focus on mine. I, I don't care. I, he's going to have a problem with the UFC, and I, I don't mind. I do my thing. Well, the way he conducts himself, George, you've been a professional all your <laughs> career. Is he bad for the sport of mixed martial arts? Uh, you know, he doesn't do major stuff, which is bad, but he's great to deliver uh, uh, in the octagon. That's one of the reasons I want to fight him. He's great, make fight exciting, and he's, I think he's going to make the best out of me come out into that fight. I think it's going to be good. You know, I want to win. And I think it's going to be good. Think, yeah, think, because of I what think, he said and everything, I because think. of his pedigree, he's a great fighter, and I want to get, I want to be better than him. You said he is one of the most disrespectful people that you have ever met, and I'm guessing it's things like this that caused you to say that. Is that correct? I, I, um, I fought so many guys that tried to get into my head, so it's not the first time. I don't know who's the most, who's not. He said bad stuff about me, but uh, it's, like I said, most of the guys I fought, uh, they, 80 percent of the guys, 85, they tried to get into my head. So it's not a new situation for me. You two did have a verbal battle over the phone. It will go down in UFC history as one of the best media uh, a conference calls. A real, a real circus. <laughs> let, let me tell you something, uneducated fool. Let, listen to me. Sure, I'm not stupid. I can tell what's what. Yeah, you, know, you look pretty smart I'll right listen, now. No, I'll I'll listen. Listen. you say what you're going to say. Everybody wants to know what George thinks and what George says and, and want to look like how George looks and, and wear, you know, wear tight shorts like George. If anything, I'm like the superhero coming in with the, with the, you know, the anti-bullshit. That was probably the best press conference I ever <laughs> attempted to. It was, it was, a, it, it amused me, you know. The conversation didn't make any sense. I'm, I, I, we both misunderstand each other. We talk about two different things. We're both out of line. He's good for it. All right, thanks, Ron. More from Ron later. Yeah. George thinks it's going to be a good fight. Yeah, I, you know, I, when you say, I think it's going to be a good fight, I say, this is going to be a good fight. You watch what I'm going to do. Yeah. You know, he's going to talk, I'm going to answer. That's how things work tomorrow night. Here's the way it works when the legend breaks it down. What does GSP have to do to keep that belt, and can Nick take it away, boss? All right. Well, GSP, of course, has to make sure that he does not get influenced by all the talk 
that uh, Diaz does. He needs to fight just like he did with Condit. You know, strike some and shoot for a takedown on the ground. You got to stay out of the guard, which is easier said than done, of course, against D Diaz. And just ground and pound on the feet. Simply keep your left hand in front of the face, which will stop the jabs. Or he jabs himself because, believe it or not, he has a longer reach than yeah. Nick Diaz. I didn't expect that. Now, Diaz needs to fight to get up because GSP will take him down. He has the most completed takedowns in UFC history with 75. But then he needs to do whatever it takes to get back up. This will get him, but also GSP tired. And if he gets tired, that means, yeah, GSP is tired, but it's a hometown crowd. There's a lot of pressure on George, you know, sometimes that will take stamina away from the opponent, from the person we're mm -hmm. talking about. And that's what I would do. And then hopefully in the championship rounds, he can do something. But when GSP fights, like he did against Condit, ah, it's going to be a hard one because woo, that, that was the GSP I really liked. Mm -hmm. You know, before that, I got what people said. He was kind of playing it safe, yeah. you know, but against Condit, he really went out and, and, and see if we could stop him. Carlos Condit, the interim champ who lost to GSP, taking on Johnny Hendricks, the man who thought he should be getting the next shot at GSP. Yep. The winner of this likely will get a shot. Dana White said this would probably be the number one contender. So what does Condit have to do to get back at another title shot? He needs to work angles moving backwards to the left because Hendricks is a southpaw, has a big left hand. You know, let him miss those. And uh, when Hendricks decides to take him down, in the works, keep him in the guard. Watch out for that left straight. Diaz connected a few times with Condit, and he also is a southpaw. Hendricks needs to watch out for the counters. You know, and uh, he needs to be in and out. Very important. Take his time. Set up that big hand. Maybe with straights to the body. That would be a really good way, you know. And uh, if he goes for a takedown, I would keep stay, try to stay out of the guard. Go for a ground and pound because Condit's very good on the ground. Nate Marquardt, Jake Ellenberger, these are guys that have come close to moving up, but something's always happened along the way. Now they fight each other. One man goes up, one man goes down in the rankings. What about uh, Nate and Jake? Well, Marquardt, he needs to get this fight on the ground. I would. You know, why would you stand banging with a banger, you know? His hands look much better, but still it's dangerous to play with Ellenberger. You strike it, set up a takedown, go for ground and pound, and for submissions because he's got a great submission game. He's got to push the fight, though, because Ellenberg doesn't have the greatest gas tank. Ellenberg wants to keep it on his feet, you know, because Nate's good on the ground. And just punching, brawling, landing those big shots, I don't think Ellenberg is going to be taken down because his takedown offense was like 93%. I believe that's the number three spot yeah. in UFC history of takedowns, takedown defense. So it's going to be hard to take him down, and he will, wants to keep this on the feet. I truly believe Marquardt's. To play safe, he's good on his hand, uh, with his hands, but go to the ground. It's going to be a great night, looks like, with all those fights. Deep division, Ron Kruk will take a closer look at the division later. We take a closer look at some weigh-ins you probably didn't see on the undercard at UFC 158, but we think you'd like him, including this guy. He's a freak. No, actually, that's what he calls himself, yep. the freak show. Colin <laughs> Fletcher put off the mask and had the, I hope that was, fake teeth. Here, you want a chocolate now, buddy? Patrick Cote and, Bo and Bobby Volker, they've been training hard, cutting some weight, so let's have a little chocolate. You know, we'll square off, we'll have sweet smelling breath for each other. Yeah, but after cutting weight, and the first thing that you're gonna put in your body is chocolate. I don't know if that's the smartest thing to do. I think you need to be something healthy because the body is screaming, give me something, something good, and then you wanna give it carbs. Yeah, like Cocoa Puffs. Healthy carbs, Oh, yeah. not like Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> Yeah, you just like my Bianca, like my daughter. Uh, Cocoa Puffs all the way. Cocoa can you can never go wrong. Yeah, Her Captain birthday. Crunch also. Whoop, 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 whoop. Coming up, history perhaps being made. Should a transgender female be allowed to fight Ronda women? Rousey. Fallon Fox, <laughs> MMA's first open transgender fighter, joins us live with the answer when Inside MMA returns. Don't miss Inside MMA. Live next Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern. Welcome back inside MMA. Kenny Rice, Boss Rudin. Glad that you could join us. Yep. She's 37 years old. She's undefeated right now. In the last, oh, about eight, nine months, she's making a lot of noise. First off, as an amateur, just breezing through the competition. And now, Fallon Fox after a couple of fights as a pro, is undefeated. Oh, 
Yvette. She has won uh, her last two impressively by a knockout and a TKO. That was obviously not the graphic, yep. but Fallon is perfect as a pro in this CFA Women's Featherweight Tournament. And she has also been making news, national news, with a documentary that's very touching and moving. She is a transgender female, one of the first openly transgender MMA fighters. And Fallon joins us now from Chicago. We welcome her into the show. Fallon, welcome into the show. Thank you for being with us. Congratulations on all the success uh, so far. I mean, to start any time later in a life at 30. 4, 35, 36 years old, it's a pretty impressive start. Are you proud of the way you're fighting right now? I'm very proud and very happy of the way I've of my performance so far. It's, it's been a, an awesome and wild ride so far. I, w I was on the Joe Rogan podcast last week, and we were talking about this, and then I, I thought, okay, it was women, okay, she's going to fight uh, against uh, men then. But they said, no, 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 against women. I said, why is that fair? And I started doing my homework. But then I realized later, because obviously the Olympics, uh, the Comité and the Boxing, the ABC Commission, uh, CBA, what is it, ABC Commission, they all say it's good. It's, they say that at the moment that they cut off the testosterone, everything becomes female. Because in the beginning I thought there were tendons were stronger, bone dense, are more dense, but apparently everything is going back to being a female. Yes, that's the science behind it. That's what people need to realize. And um, I know there's a lot of misconceptions about um, uh, transgender uh, physiology uh, post, uh, for post-operative transsexuals, but that's what they found, that the b bone density uh, decreases, the muscle mass decreases, the tendons and everything that you're talking about are, are fall, fall within the female range. Um, I know there's a lot of misconceptions and that's what we need to clear up. And I guess that's one of the things because even today the Florida Commission is meeting to try to look at the situation. You know, there's still states out there that are not banning it, but Fallon, they're taking a look at it. What would you tell them right now if you could go before any commission that may question a transgender, male or female, uh, to fight within that gender? What would you say to them to uh, make your case? I think that uh, they need to look at the IOC guidelines, uh, the guidelines that the PGA, the LGPA, the uh, NCAA has used uh, in implementing uh, transgender policy. They also need to talk to specialists in these realms so that they can be on the up and up on our physiology and, you know, just uh, have an open mind. And I believe they need to clear the way um, for transgender athletes because we're going to be in all sports. Mm -hmm. And um, this is just the beginning in MMA. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be the, the last one to do this. Unfortunately, not everybody is like me, Ken, you know, I get, whatever, you know, I, I really don't mind, I truly get this, but you know as well as I do, a lot of other people are really not open to this. I believe that this is probably a much harder fight than fighting in the cage, isn't it? Uh, for sure, um, in some ways, I mean, I guess uh, fighting in the cage, it's all up to me. It's all about the training and the hard work and effort that I put forward into it. But there's some people, you just can't change their minds. They're always gonna have, uh, be, have a bias or they're just gonna be mean and hate, hateful people. Um, I, I hope that they have an open mind uh, and uh, consider transgender uh, athletes in a positive light for the future. Fallon, you wrestled in high school, you know, like uh, thousands of people do. You compete as a high school athlete. What uh, made you decide to get into MMA? And again, you're, you're in your 30s, I think, when you really started focusing on the MMA career. What uh, uh, got you interested in that sport? Uh, I was just in the gym lifting weights, and uh, there was a physical trainer there who brought me into an MMA gym. And uh, they had wrestling there, they had jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. And once I started training, and those disciplines, I just got hooked, and I just fell in love with it. Um, watching a lot of uh, female MMA also inspired me, like Megumi Fuji. She's my favorite uh, MMA fighter, and a lot of the Japanese uh, female MMA fighters were uh, very inspirational, and they also got me hooked into MMA. And uh, I have a student, he was last week, he was here on the clip, and he's 38 years old when he started fighting. I told him, dude, you, you want to take this all the way? Is this something? I mean, you started late, a mixed martial arts career. How far do you want to take this career? 
Oh, I want to take it as far as I can take it. Um, as long as my body holds out, um, I want to go as far as I can go. There's a, a few MMA fighters in their 40s, I guess. Like, what is it, Henderson? <laughs> right? He's in his That's 40s. Not. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I just want to go as, as far as I can with it. I mean, I, I really, really love the sport. I'm in love with it. I, if I could, I'd do it forever. So. Fallon, you're fighting again uh, in April in the CFA tournament. What, what have you learned about yourself as a fighter? Because you've been so impressive so far. You haven't fought more than eight minutes combined looking at the amateur record and the pro record. Correct, correct. Um, that's not unheard of in, in female fighting, I guess. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I don't know. I guess. I guess what I what I want to do right now is get um, a uh, better better challenges, better better competition, and I suppose um, I'll have that on down the road. Well, what I want to do right now is get through this tournament and hopefully look at other opportunities. Maybe see if they will bring someone in who's got who's a really really good fighter, or maybe I, I can look towards uh, Invicta. But first, I have to get through this tournament, and you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens after that. What does what a, a typical day for you look like? I hear you have a 16-year-old daughter. I saw her in the documentary. Very sweet lady, uh, little lady. Uh, is it, I mean, that's still going on, too. You have to drive her to school. She's 16 years old. Does she still have her car? How is training working all into that? How is training and working with her? Well, she's pretty much got her own um, schedule. She's, uh, she's in a track, so most of the time after school, um, uh, she's busy doing track and I'm busy training and then afterwards she's doing her homework and I'm probably sleeping so um, I don't know we just we just pretty much I don't know uh, stick to our own selves at the moment because we're so busy in our own disciplines are there other transgender on the weekends we, we tend to have fun so yeah uh, are there other transgender females or males out there that you know about that uh, maybe want to be fighters or are fighters now that uh, have it come out as open as you have that you're hoping this will open the door for them to also come forward? Um, not in MMA that I know of, but I know that I've been uh, emailed and um, contacted by transgender fighters and other disciplines um, of martial arts. Like, um, I'm not going to say which ones, but, you know, they're out there. And, yeah, I, I, I believe this will open the door up for them. I hope so. And your fight's in May, I believe. They tell me now that it's been moved to May. Is that correct? I believe so. I believe May 11th. But uh, I would uh, stay tuned to CFA to know for sure. All right. We'll be keeping in touch. Fallon, yeah. thank you for being with us. Uh, we'll continue to follow that unbeaten streak that you have going. Godspeed. All right. Fallon Fox with us. You know, Interesting interview. It was, you know, because in the first, you know, when Joe said it, I go, yeah, she's right. I wrote it down here, like the upper body strength, grip nah, strength, stronger listen. denser bones. But all that apparently, indeed, disappears, you know. I didn't know that before, don't, so we did our homework. Don't ever, that's and right, find we do out. our homework. Don't ever be a doctor on TV unless you're a doctor. That's true. All right. It's good one. I like that one. Thank you. I just, I just thought of that. You just thought of that. I, I just thought just of that. Threw it out. When we come back, those operators, Pat and Michael, will join us. Operator. Operator. A title shot for the next great Irish fighter. And did Pat Berry invent a new training technique? Find out when Inside MMA returns. His face looks like a horror movie. Bleach is covered in blood. He's fading. He's fading. He's fading. Judo Jim Wallhead taking care of Matt Veach with authority at Bama. His third straight win, that organization. You probably saw it here live on Access TV, your home for... Mixed martial arts. Yeah. Then if you didn't, there's more fighting coming up in just about... In a little got? bit. About yeah. 35 minutes? Yep. 35 minutes. Muay Thai action from Lion Fight taking place in Las Vegas. And as always, Michael Chavello and Pat Militich will be there to have the call for us and right there they are. We're looking right at you guys. Gentlemen, it was a fun show. The last time that the national audience got to see Muay Thai, I expect uh, more of the same tonight. Well, you know, it's Lion Fight 9 tonight, and last time we... we, we
we saw Yodson Clive Fairtex in action, which was a big coup, his first ever fight here in America. And tonight, Scott Kent of Lion Fighters does it, does it again. He brings our team Levin to America to take on Simon Marcus from Canada. Yo, and yo. Kenny Bass, you're talking yo, here about the number one and the number two ranked light heavyweights in the world. They do not get any better than these two. You know, both the WBC and the WMC have come out over the last couple of weeks and says this fight really determines who is the true number one light heavyweight in the world. It's important to me to stay undefeated to prove that, you know, that I'm the best. To fight somebody uh, at this level, uh, Tiffany is a great fighter, so to win against her would be a huge accomplishment. I've fallen in love with, with Muay Thai, and through Muay Thai I've discovered really who I am, and I just want to prove to myself that, you know, I can get better, that, that I can still grow, that I'm not done, that I'm, I'm just going to get better every time I step in the ring, and um, as a fighter and as a person. This fight's been, uh, it's been over a year. We've been trying to make it happen. I'm putting all my energy towards the fight tonight and I finally have the opportunity to make the dreams come true and that's what I'm focused on. So it feels good to, it's finally happening. I wait, Marcos wait. This is fight. Las Vegas, this is fight capital boxing show or MMA show. And uh, I want in the future, this is a uh, Muay Thai show too. It's gonna be surreal. I mean, this is a moment I've been dreaming of for seven years now, and I've been working hard to get to this point, and I feel like nothing's gonna come in my way, and nothing's gonna stop me from putting that belt on my way, so I'll embrace the moment when, it, when I get there. I cannot wait for that main event. It will determine the number one light heavyweight in the world. Also, the world championship on the line. It is set for five rounds of action. Our team leaving, taking on Simon Marcus. Marcus undefeated, 31-0, 22 knockouts. Our team leaving, a record of 44 wins with 33 knockouts, three losses, one draw. Pat, how do you see this one going down? It could be the power of Simon Marcus against the reach and the boxing skill of the superb Artem Levin. Yeah, you're exactly right. Artem Levin precision striker he stands on the outside very well crisp punches and he has one of the best flying knees in all of Muay Thai and Simon Marcus has sick power at the weigh-ins yesterday I mean the guy was so ripped he looked just scary standing there and I think the MMA fans out there who haven't watched true Muay Thai, especially at this level, are going to understand what true striking looks like after this show. Of course, you saw Yodson Klein Fairtex last time. Consider this our team leaving on his extensive record has a win over Yodson Klein Fairtex. They are one and one. Hopefully, we may see a trilogy eventuate between these two. In the co main event tonight, another undefeated fighter, Tiffany Van Sost, takes on the very tall and rangy Natalie Yip. Talking to Natalie yesterday, Pat, she is full of confidence that she has some tricks up her. Her sleeve she says she's gonna rely on traditional basics to beat Tiffany here tonight I think Tiffany has to psych her out early get on her face and overcome the massive reach differential yeah and the thing the interesting matchup between these two um, Natalie is a girl who does she moves straight forward straight back doesn't use a lot of footwork where Van Seuss is an angle type fighter she's blended more Western style boxing and footwork in with her Muay Thai so it's gonna be interesting to see which one comes out on top and of course, if you like Muay Thai Thai style, we do have a triple stadium champion on tonight's card. Pawarit Sasiprapa, who is a former Rajdamun, former Omnoy, and a former Channel 7 stadium champion. He's been a champion since he was 16 years old in Thailand. He is in action tonight against Onion Topic. Boys, it is going to be a big one here at Lion Fights 9, live from Las Vegas very soon here on Access TV. Until then, back to you, Kenny and Bass. Ah, thank you, Michael and Pat. So, y Yip has yeah. a trick up her sleeve, but I say, once she's fighting, she doesn't have a sleeve on. She so doesn't have a sleeve. I don't know. I don't know. We do know this. You can participate. Who's going to be the first Lion Fight Light Heavyweight champ? Download our Access TV Fight app from iTunes or Android users. Go to our Facebook page, and we'll be telling about the poll results. Michael and Pat will throughout the fight, and you have your chance to win great prizes. Love prizes. We got prizes. So, sign stuff. You know what else stuff. we've got? We no. got regional highlights. I love highlights too. All over the place. Just say. You ready? Yeah, go. Okay, let's go to them. Hit it. Here we go. Around the world. Regional highlights coming up. I see them now. I see Lamore, California, and lightweights, Kurt Eberhard and Alberto Ariola. Ariola 4 and 0, a wrestler from West Hills College in Lamore. Side joke! He's got it now. He's got it now. Finally. He does. 
Ariola wins. He is 5-0 and oh with the victory. Now we move on to Newcastle, England middleweights. Lee Barnes in the white. Steve Watson, the brown and gray. Oh. And Steve Watson's going down. Very nice short left hook. You know, you could see this. He was just making a step, so he was off balance. And then a hook, of course, does way more impact, has way more impact. But the guillotine choke works also. Why not? Test mixed martial arts. Knock him down, choke him out. Barnes wins for the 12th time in his career. And now more action. James McSweeney against Dion Starring. You probably remember him, the guy that Hulk. fought Daniel Cormier. And it kind of looked like that. He goes down again, McSweeney on top of him. Wow, that was an, uh, a great kick. And he turned away from the kick, so he kind of hit the back of the head as well. And that's, of course, for maximum effect. Kick maximum the back effect. of the head. In the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. Dink. We, oh. we can only laugh from this distance. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't want to be there. But McSweeney is the winner. Here we go. This is Cal Pendred and Gail Grimaud. Grimaud. Grimaud is the current welterweight champ in France. Oof. You Look at that. him. Just he grabs him every time, puts him against the fence, and just goes to town. He's going to take him down. Yeah. Yes, he yes. is. Nice double leg there. Pendred taking care of business, yep. and now he wants to come to America. Coming to America. Just like Eddie Murphy. Yeah, uh, whatever happens, uh, Cage Warriors tell me who to fight. If the UFC want me, uh, I'm ready. I know they're going back to Boston this year. I was born there. Uh, I'd love to return and fight there. And there's a big, uh, there's a big Irish American community over there. I think it'd be, it'd be nearly criminal if I wasn't to fight in that. Yeah. He is 12-2-1. His teammate, uh, Conor McGregor, we've seen him here before on Inside MMA, mm -hmm. has already signed a deal with the UFC. But wouldn't you like to be the guys putting the fight on and yeah, you just promoter. interview the promoter and say, hey, what's next? <laughs> I want to get out of here. I want to go to the UFC. Well, Not maybe only, it's there. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of your country, and I want to go to the UFC. Yeah, oh, well, it happens. But it's a great yeah. fighter. He's Blasting a good fighter. around, like to knock people out. That's what we like to see. Call Pendred, remember that name. And remember, we'll be right back. Prospect Watch. One of the rarest knockouts in MMA. And more from UFC 158 in Montreal when Inside MMA returns. Oh, yeah. Welcome back, Inside MMA. You know, this is Ben Henderson. We've been following him. Well, we followed him when he was Ben Henderson, yeah. now Benson Henderson, of course, the lightweight champ. Yeah, added three letters to his name. That's, that's right. And, and you know what else he added? Champ does. He added another title, the International Open Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Term of the Weekend. He won two. He won at 181 and a half. He won the absolute division, the open division. And, I, and what else did he do? I, I, he was cornering his mother. He cornered his mom. He coached her to a third-place finish. I'll Way to go, that. Benson. And by the way, we got to get your mom on the show now. That would be really funny. What you know, do it together. You know, we used to do that one time. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. Uriah Faber we had, and that yeah. was a fun show. That would be good. You know what else is good is when you send us in your favorite MMA moments. We appreciate it very much. Yeah. yeah and here they are now. It's good. The viewer submissions. And okay. we start in South Texas Fighting Championship, where Von Govia was taking on Mikey Sayans. Look at this. And now he goes a one-two. He starts with the left. You know, that is really, really good thinking. Not a lot of people do that. They they smell yeah. the, the the wind and then they go with the power bombs. But he simply wanted to throw a one-two. Very nice. Gavia with the knockout victory. And now it is Michael Otterheim taking on Josh Spears, an American <laughs> battle championship. <laughs> oh, it's big oh. man. Big Look. man. You see everything move. Boom. See even the water bottle. It's like, see this other water bottle moving. Look at Otterrith. He climbs as much as he can the cage. Way to go, Michael. Good win. It's like that movie, Jurassic Park. Now you got to watch this. <laughs> Brandon Alexander, Aaron uh, Britt, Galaxy uh, Fight. Boom, bam, out. Goodbye. <laughs> hey, wait. There's two men down. <laughs> two men enter. No one leaves. Oh, let me dream. Let Get dream. Look Let's dream that. together. Look at that. Shall it's a double together? knockout, boss, which reminds me. Yeah, let us dream. Oh, yeah, we're dreaming now. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we seen this before? First off, eight second saloon in 08, Tyler Bryan and Sean Parker with Shoney Carter. Yeah. Reffing. That was the first double knockout we ever saw, right? In MMA. In MMA, yeah, 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 yeah. But wait. There's more. 
flashback time. Yeah, you think that again. guy? I think this one. I got this one. Here, this was in. This was last year. Marcin Mansell against Matuz Zawadzi. Zawadzi. Like two Rams. Boom. Yeah. Headbutting each other. Menzel and Zawadzi going down and out. At least they didn't fall from high. That's it. Yeah, they were already low. <laughs> and to our knowledge, that is the only three double knockouts that we can remember in MMA. And remember, you can send in your videos to us on Facebook or Twitter, your chance to win a Bozzy at the end of the year. Yeah, this time it's like this, this Bozzy, something like this, right? What is Holding it, like something. the Zen Bozzy again? Yeah, I, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know either. We'll figure it out. Hey, there's stuff that was right there and not left, which means it's time for the news. <laughs> That's what it means when that goes away. Mauricio Shogun Hua. Wrapped up two weeks of working with Hall of Fame boxing coach Freddie Roach today. Who had told me this morning at the Wild Card Gym in Hollywood that he is pleased with the progress he has made with his footwork, saying, quote, my foot speed and positioning are most improved, being able to shuffle to get in position to throw a punch with more power, end of quote. Who also says that he will go to Miami for a few days, then resume training camp in Brazil for his June rematch with Antonio Rogério Nogueira. Roach, meanwhile, says of Hua, as only Freddie can, quote, he came in here hitting like a girl, now he hits like a boy, end of quote. <laughs> then he went on to say that Hua has great power. It's about being in position to make the most of that strength. Also, surprisingly, John Fix made a public appearance in the L.A. area, and coincidentally, he dropped by to work out as well at Wild Card. Fitch told me that he may be training some with Freddie Roach before his World Series of Fighting debut in June 14th. Still working on that. Well, the injury bug doesn't hit just the big organizations. Leandro Silva is out of RFA 7 after developing a staph infection in his leg. Brandon Thatch will instead face the undefeated Rufus Sport fighter Mike Rhodes in the main event. That will be live on Access TV next Friday. And rising star Sergio Pettis also off the card, not because of his problems, but because of his opponent. Matt Manzarnius is pulling out because of a knee injury. And this is being billed as the first sibling matchup in MMA history. Brothers Mike and Thomas Treadwell will fight each other on the undercard of MFC 37 May 10th in Edmonton. Both men are making their professional debuts. The brothers live in the same condo in Edmonton. And middle brother Russ will act as the corner man for Thomas, the youngest. <laughs> We're not sure if that means he has something against his older brother. Meanwhile, months just months, only seven of them, is the head coach of what was going to be the Super Camp Black Zillions. Mario Sperry is throwing in the towel. Sperry, who replaced the former head coach, Mike Van Arsdell, announced his resignation this week. Black Zillion fighter Danilo Villafort said the team will not use a head coach moving forward, but instead have a different coach for specific skill areas to make decisions as a team, which might be a good way to go, boss, because look at this stat. The Black Zillions looked like they were becoming a real super camp, but not so much when you look at those numbers. You know, and it's so weird to get such great fighters there. Torres, Johnson, Elia Alvarez, I mean, Gillard, Bahadur Zada, Tyron Spong, Ryan Jimmo's there, yeah. Rashad, of course, and an Overeem. I mean, they got a great group of guys there all together. You would think that... Uh, that, that is a great team, but the yeah. trick is, of course, are they also training together? I don't that's know about it. that. That's, that's I it. think, the key factor here. If they would train all together, it's almost impossible not to be good. Sometimes a collection of outstanding individuals does not meld into a team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Team. Together, team. everyone achieves more. That's what it stands for. You know who said that to me? No, who? Kurt Otto from IFL. Really? Yeah. Well, that IFL worked out well. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Nah. Didn't go. Okay. So sometimes you're driving along and maybe you didn't watch the Weather Channel and you get caught in the middle of Nebraska in a blizzard and you're saying, what the? That's what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> and his girlfriend had victified a Rose Namajunas. This is out in the middle of the snow. I mean, it's basically white out conditions behind them. They obviously strip down, or maybe they drive around in the car that way. I don't know. You never know. You caught them at the right but, moment. But I'd they have no made clue. the most of it. <laughs> you know, why, why not? Oh, well. And I got to tell you. Ben and I shared a restroom together also. I, I tweeted that picture. It's very, very funny. We went to a restroom, and there were two one, next to one stall. Open it up, yeah. and there's two next to each other. Yeah. We were sat down. Right away, we looked and said, we've got to make a picture here.
By the way, I, I'm not sure if NXS was in the back of their car or that was just music. Yeah, that was good music. I, that was good music. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I like that. So, so way to go, Pat the and Rose. Nice dancing, by the way. Yeah. They could be dancing with the stars. Well, you know, yeah, Pat did kind of you know, the same thing. I'm going to call Jim but Cantori. Okay. Maybe it get works. him on the Weather Channel, too, in the next time around. Spider-Man. Spider-Man. That's what he holds. He holds this little Spider-Man like that. See? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I definition TV can see. We go back to Montreal for more from UFC 158. And Matt Riddle finds a new home. He joins us live when Inside MMA returns. And you're looking at live right now in Las Vegas at Lion Fight. Nick Chasteen in the black taking on Eduardo. Alvarado in the pink. Now, there's a tough guy who wears pink. You know, my fight. watch my first Pankers fight. My first two, I was wearing those shorts, th that color. The same ones? No, mine were oh. dark purple, oh. but they were so gone that they became pink. They actually told me to please not fight in those anymore, and then they gave me a whole outfit for free. See, okay, that's why I was that's, doing that's it. What, that's the way to do it, get yeah. it free. Lion Check fight coming up right after this. That'll be the light heavyweight title fight. Mm. So be sure to catch it. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I like striking that. And Tiffany for Seuss. Yeah, so Tiffany's been on her show. She's a rising yep. star for sure. Okay, George St. Pierre, we know he's going to fight Nick Diaz. Belt on the line. We've heard all the talk. I'm tired of the talk, yep. aren't you? Yeah, really? see it now. Let's just fight. One oh. thing we do know for sure is you see guys like that, Condit and Hendricks. This is a deep, deep division. Maybe the deepest in the UFC. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Close yeah. to it. Yep. Close to it. You yep. know, Ellen Berger and Mark Ward, they're all good. And... and and they're all in shape, all in shape and great stamina. You know, that's that vision that they're strong, fast, and in shape, always. Ron Kruk now. Hey, how'd you like the way we did that? Yeah, Ron we did Kruk that. now. Like James Bond. Yes, that was. Ooh, blood comes down. Yes. <laughs> Ron <laughs> I'm going to say that again. Ron Kruk now <laughs> takes a look at what could happen and the ratings that will happen on Sunday morning for the winners and losers. <laughs> March Madness is underway in the UFC welterweight division as the unofficial 170-pound tournament goes down here at the Bell Center in Montreal on Saturday night. Five out of the top ten welterweights will be in action. And when the dust settles, the landscape of the division may change dramatically. And that's exactly what the contenders are hoping for. This fight Saturday is so important to go out there and earn that, you know, earn it one more time. And then GSP has nowhere to run, you know, he has nowhere to look except for me because he'll knock off the number four ranked guy and I've done everything else for him. So if I beat Carlos Condit, then there's nobody else for him to fight except for me. When the dust finally settles Sunday morning, where do you find yourself in this division? Hopefully getting a shot at the belt. You know, nothing else matters. It, 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 nobody cares about number two. Nobody cares about number five. In five years, nobody cares about anybody but who had that belt. Hendricks has probably done more in the division to earn a title shot than anyone. However, Dana White still hasn't guaranteed he'll get one with a win. Meanwhile, his opponent, Carlos Condit, is hoping a victory earns him a rematch with GSP. The welterweight division, like you said, is stacked. Um, you know, win over over any guy, whether they're number one contender or anywhere in the top ten or, or you know, anybody in the division is, you know, it's a, it's a good accomplishment. I hope to have uh, solidified myself as one of the top guys and uh, hopefully the number one contender. Other welterweights are waiting in line for their shot, too, like number four ranked Rory McDonald, whose neck injury forced him off the card. How far away from a title shot do you believe you are? Um, a good performance or two. You know, it just, you know, it, it could happen really quickly. If the UFC doesn't want a Condit GSP rematch, then maybe number six ranked Jake Ellenberger slips in if he can get past Nate Marquardt. I haven't really even thought about the title, to be honest. You know what I mean? I, that's obviously that, that's my goal. That's that's really the only reason I'm in this sport is, is to become world champ. It's cool to have a number in front of your name, um, probably more for the fans. But you know, to me, I know how that works. It doesn't mean anything. Of course, the future of the welterweight division depends on St. Pierre getting by Diaz and then deciding if he wants to fight middleweight champion Anderson Silva. When I asked GSP about the potential super fight being next for him, he said, "I don't know." It's a very complicated situation. In Montreal, Ron Kruk for Inside MMA.
All right, Ron, as always, thanks. McDonald hurt his neck again this week. He's going to yeah. be out for another couple of weeks or so. You know, the thing that's is with tough. that, you know, I, I, that's you know, a tough I, injury. I, I hope he lives because that's the injury that, that first of all, stopped my career in the beginning. If the doctor says take a month, take two months. That's what I'm saying now. You know, everybody, he's young and he goes like, oh, a month, I'll, I can do it in one week. Don't do it. Well, you know, payback is, uh, -hoo -hoo -hoo. yeah, later when you get old. It's an Elton John hit song title. And it's, and by the way, you were giving doctor, doctor advice again, weren't you? Oh, again, I'm, that's, that's the way exactly I, you know, it. I like it. The people, you know, learn hey, from my mistakes. Thanks for watching mistake. us. Take two aspirin, call us in the morning. Or you could do like some viewers. And you could take issue with comments like the one that Dave Bagel uh, had last week when he was on with us. It writes for Milwaukee.com. And so these guys sound off for us. time now. Women have just about as much of an opportunity in the world, let alone in sports and combat sports, as men. So please, get over it. In reality, when I see two women fighting, uh, it, to me, it's just two fighters. Um, I, I, I honestly, I forget uh, you know, that it's two women fighting and it's just who's, who's the best, who's going to win, and how are they going to win. Um, it's just an athletic competition like any other. Sorry, Dave. Just uh, I don't know. Retire, okay? Just get out, or don't uh, or don't talk about MMA ever again. Oh. All right, guys. Very good. Thank you for sounding off. We want to hear you sound off. No more on Dave Beagle, though. By no. the way, you know he made his statement, and uh, you can upload your clips to Twitter or Facebook and send them our way. That's it. Just like it says right there. Keep That's them it. under 30 seconds. You may see yourself on national TV on Inside MMA. Look at you. Look at oh, you. Look at and us. Then Just you can like get us. all the chicks. Wow. Money for nothing. <laughs> and All right. For free. Stay with us. Controversial fighter has a new place to fight. Stay right here. Don't go away. <laughs> Friday night. And since this is Friday, welcome back in. Inside. Inside. Access Fights partner Legacy continues to grow their talent pool this week with the addition of ex-UFC fighter Demacio Page. He's expected to make his debut on May 31st. Mm -hmm. Also recently, uh, a guy that's been controversial, welterweight Matt Riddle. Cut by the UFC after failing not one, but two drug tests in less than a year and also costing him two victories that he would have had. And now Matt joins us from Las Vegas, now with Legacy. Matt, welcome in. And how, how's this deal working out with Legacy? Uh, it's, it's working out good, man. They're, they're nice. They're giving me fight options, and uh, they're paying well. So I really can't ask more from an organization. So. Who, who is next? Who is on the list, on the hit list for you at uh, Legacy? Uh, uh, you know, that they got a welterweight champion, and, uh, you, you know, I've never had a title. You know, I've spent my whole career in the UFC, and it's kind of hard to get one of their world titles. So, you know, I would like to get a title at welterweight or maybe middleweight, whatever comes first, you know, and whatever offers there first, you know? Max, you know, you did so well, but it seemed like you were your own worst enemy. I mean, we talk about the two uh, suspensions because of drugs. The drugs both times were marijuana. Is that correct? Both times you test positive for marijuana. So are you still smoking? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I am using still, you know, it, it, I'm prescribed it, but at the same time, I'm going to take more precautions. I'm going to quit five weeks out. I guess three weeks wasn't enough, and I'm pretty confident that should be enough to keep it out of my system. You, you don't think it's any problems for you? I mean, we hear that some people say, we just heard Joe Rogan actually say, you know, we, we thought maybe it does something for pain. You have no problems with it? It doesn't slow you down, I believe. Who can fight on pot? No, you know, I think it affects everybody a little differently, and it affects me. It doesn't really slow me down. It just it, it, it makes things normal, you know? I'm really hyper. I'm high-paced, and, uh, you know, it just slows things down, and it also helps me with a bunch of other ailments, so...
It, you know, to me, it, it's a miracle plant. Uh, you know, to the government, I guess it's against the law in some states or whatever. But where I'm from, in Nevada, here, it's legal. I'm a legal patient. Okay, you're a legal patient. We'll, we'll, we'll qualify that, okay? But I want you to listen to this with us, Matt, because one, you're, you're going to remember Dana White, the man that basically said get another organization. He recently talked about pot, and Joe Rogan, when he was on our show a few months back, he also offered his opinion on marijuana in MMA. Let's listen in, guys. To say that, that uh, marijuana is a performance-enhancing drug, I think it's the exact opposite. And what, what the commissions are saying is they think it's a painkiller. Still, ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't believe in it, but here, here's the facts. It's illegal. You can't do it. It says it in the regulations you can't. And if you get busted for doing it, you're going to be in big trouble. I think it might actually enhance you. Yeah. There's a lot of guys who like to do marijuana and do jiu-jitsu because they say it enhances their feel. And you could also argue that marijuana helps you absorb pain. It helps you uh, deal with pain. It's a pain reliever. So you wouldn't want anybody to be able to fight on something that allows them to take more pain. All right, Matt, did, did you hear all that? Because I think the one thing is, as Dana said, it's illegal. I don't know if you can get some exemption because you have a medical exemption, but uh, so far no state's done that, I believe. And as Rogan says, does it help numb the pain to help you fight better? Uh, you know, it doesn't, and I also want to say, I don't want to fight high, you know, I'm not trying to smoke before I get in the cage, take a bong rip ringside, you know, I'm not trying to do that. I'm trying to be able to use my medicine maybe two weeks prior to a fight, so I get decent sleep during my training camp and things like that, you know? And yeah, it does help me with pain, but like, not to an extent where I can just walk through punishment. You, you know just as well as anybody else, if you get hit in the chin, you're going to get knocked out, you know, it doesn't matter matter what you're on you know so I you know it's, I don't think it's performance enhancing whatsoever and I don't think it numbs you enough just to take punishment I think you you either have it or you don't which what camp uh, with who uh, are you training right now which camp what's that which with which camp are you training right now I'm training with uh, Drysdale's gym. There's a, there's a bunch of us. I train with James McSweeney, Robert Drysdale, you know, Martin Campman's in there, Jay Huron's in there. there. There's just, there's tons of people that come into Drysdale's gym in uh, Vegas. Matt, you've done something that very few people have been able to do, that is start your career, and obviously up until now, had your entire UFC career, all your, your pro career in the UFC, you know, in there with the notables like uh, Penn and Liddell, and guys of that nature, you were seven and three with two no contests. Uh, when you look back on it, do you have regrets about this whole UFC thing or, you know, wish you could have maybe done something different, worked out something different to stay with them? Uh, you know, yeah, I wish, you know, they didn't just uh, give me a call and give me the pink slip, but, uh, you know, I, they, I already knew they weren't happy with how outspoken I was with marijuana and the legalization. And I knew they, you know, they already gave me multiple calls before that fight telling me, you know, to behave, this, that, don't fail a drug test. And, uh, you know, I quit three weeks out and I, I failed the drug test. That was my mistake. I really don't know how that happened, but, you know, just you got to take more precautions. And, uh, you know, I wish it would have been nicer. I wish I would still fight for the UFC, but I'm more than happy to fight for legacy and, you know, build, you know, build my legacy. Matt, we appreciate your candor. Thanks for being on with us, and good luck with legacy. I'm sure we'll talk again. Thank you. Party on. All right. You know, I like guys that just lay it out there. Will you agree or not? You know, he just <laughs> speaks his mind. Although I will say this, I never, I don't remember uh, Cheech and Chong ever being knocked out in one of their movies. Nope. nope. I'm not saying that helps the pain, but I don't know. But what I'm saying is also seven and three could have been nine and three. Could have been nine and three and still been in there. That's you the know, key. Because he won before they stripped it away. All right. Best of the week. This is the drug-free portion we promise. Yes. Max Nunez starts us off at number five with this knockout of Marcin Lazarus at Bama 12. The Max Attack. Max Attack. No. Here we go. Hi ho, hi ho. It's off to, to work, work we go. go. <laughs> <laughs> hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. Now, Boom. moving on, number, number four. He Von wanted... Gobia with the TKO. We saw him viewer submission. Look, look at the one-two he wants to do. 
One, two, say good night. Number three, Don't. James McSweeney, the TKO over starring. He, he, he fights a heavier weight class now, right? Yeah. McSweeney. Yeah. And again, more lumberjack action. Boom! And then I'll kick you in the head. I'm going to finish this fight. And he finally did with a TKO. And then judo Jimmy Wallhead chokes out Matt Veach at Bama 12, number two. The JW Marriott, the JJW. JJW. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never see that kind of action in the hallways anymore there. No. no it's not crazy. since we're not there anymore. Now we don't see this much. Brandon Alexander, Aaron Britt, Three, double KO two, from Galaxy one. Fight. Oh. I would like to see that again. One, Why not? two, three. Oh. Oh. In slow motion, they still go down. No. You know, normally, it's, if the guy, one guy gets up, you know, in MMA, it's both over. But with, with an eight count, it's about to, like, the Rocky thing, you know, and yeah. he climbed up, and then Apollo yeah. Creed legs yeah, gave yeah, out. Yeah, whatever, yeah. And he lost. But yeah, Sylvester Stallone and Carl Weathers just missed Rocky out on two. making that the top Rocky five. Two. Yes. I just watched that, actually. Oh, you can't miss That's That's really good. I like Best. that. Good stuff. That's good stuff. You know what else is good stuff? Coming up very soon, uh, we'll be live fighting. Uh, lion fighting. That's it. Live lion fighting. It's coming up in Vegas, which is 